the amazing design and function of feathers. Welcome to Nugget 388. Let's look at some amazingly designed fowl. We will be delving into one article on feathers. It is in the Scientific American, May 2024 edition. It is in the biology section. Fresh insights from fossil and living birds reveal the fascinating biology of feathers. They are quite fascinating, we will see. In October 2022, a bird with the code name B6 set a new world record that few people outside the field of ornithology noticed. Over the course of 11 days, B6, a young bar-tailed godwit, flew from its hatching ground in Alaska to its wintering ground in Tasmania, covering 8,425 miles without taking a single break. Go bar-tailed! Wow. For comparison, there is only one commercial aircraft that can fly that far nonstop a Boeing 777. With a 213-foot wingspan and one of the most powerful jet engines in the world. During its journey, B-6, an animal that could perch comfortably on your shoulder, did not land, did not eat, did not drink, and did not stop flapping, sustaining an average ground speed of 30 miles per hour, 24 hours a day, as it winged its way to the other end of the world. Well, that I, is amazing, isn't it? I guess that proves that fasting's really good for you I'm and exercise. You. <laughs> All at one time. Serious amounts of it. He's an amazing creature, isn't he? Many factors contributed to this astonishing feat of athleticism. Muscle power, a high metabolic rate, and a physiological tolerance for elevated cortisol levels, among other things. B6's Odyssey is also a triumph of the remarkable mechanical properties of some of the most easily recognized yet enigmatic structures in the biological world. Feathers. Feathers kept B6 warm overnight while it flew above the Pacific Ocean. Feathers repelled rain along the way. Feathers formed the flight surfaces of the wings that kept B6 aloft and drove the bird forward for nearly 250 hours without failing. This guy's incredible. You've got to just stand in awe of God and not the bird. One might expect that considering all the time humans have spent admiring, using, and studying feathers, we would know all their tricks by now. Yet insights into these marvelous structures continue to emerge. Over the past decade, other researchers and I have been taking a fresh look at feathers. Collectively, we have made surprising new discoveries about almost every aspect of their biology. From their evolutionary origins to their growth, development, and aerodynamics. Ixnay, no. One thing that tells us is they haven't known everything they wanted to know about them yet, have they? When they're going with an evolutionary worldview, they never they're will. They're going to get it right. Among the creatures we share the planet with today, only birds have feathers. It makes sense, then, that for centuries, scientists considered feathers a unique feature of birds. But starting in the 1990s, a series of bombshell fossil finds established that feathers were widespread and among several lineages of the bipedal carnivorous dinosaurs, known as theropods, and that birds had inherited these structures from their theropod ancestors. We have gone over the decades from this idea that the birds have evolved from the dinosaurs to that it's just a full-blown fact in these evolutionists' mind. Yeah, and they it's, just say it happened. And that's not right, because God no. says everything reproduces after its own kind. And a fowl is not the same as a beast or a reptile. A dinosaur is not going to lay an egg and a bird hatch out of it. Well, there is no scenario that's going to work, there, no it's, matter it's what. It's impossible. The discovery of feathered non-bird dinosaurs sent researchers scrambling to understand the origin and evolution of feathers, especially their role in the dawn of flight. We now know, there's your word no, there is no. and we've mentioned in other nuggets that when they say this, no, realize that they don't know. No, they just believe. They should use the word, we now believe. Many dinosaurs had feathers, and proto-feathers probably go all the way back to the common ancestor of dinosaurs and their flying reptile cousins, the pterosaurs. Those are my favorite. Did anybody know that the pterodactyl's my favorite? You've always liked that thing, haven't you? Yeah, I'm just kind of worried about that whole bat relationship, though. That kind of <laughs> creeps me out. But they are cool. I would like to ride one one day. It's causing researchers to scramble to understand the origin and evolution of feathers. Well, like you mentioned just a minute ago, they're never going to be able to find that if they're looking from an evolutionary perspective. It's well, they're not, not going to find it in any perspective because it's 
Well, it's no, there's no hooey, common hooey, ancestor hooey. of the dinosaurs or anything else. But anyway. The flat, broad, flight-enabling feathers we see across most of the wings and much of the body surface of living birds are called pinaceous feathers. Fun fact, these are the feathers people used to make into quills for writing, hence the word pen. It turns out that these feathers, too, appeared before birds. Did you know that's how we got the word pen? I wonder if that's how we got the word pencil, too. I don't know. I wonder if it's true. We'll have to look that up. You'll have to look that up. We'll, we'll get back with you. That. Or if you know, put it in the comments put it below. In the comments. And if you're writing in the comments and all that, go ahead and subscribe. Some researchers argued. Imagine that. These animals must have been able to fly. Well, that's not a common that people argue. I don't mean to be popping off about that. They just don't know. And so one guy has this idea and another guy has another idea. And Well, they're talking about dinosaurs specifically in this thing. I would encourage everybody to read the whole article. It's a fascinating read. Just because if some dinosaurs showed feathers, we'll just give them that for a minute. That doesn't mean they used to be each other any more than a cat and a dog both have four legs. That doesn't mean they used to be each other. Yeah, commonality always just shows a common designer, not necessarily yeah. that you came from the other one. The system works, so God used it in different ways. That's all. Recent work by flight biomechanics experts, including me, has overturned this received wisdom. That me is not me, by the way. That me is the article <laughs> That's author. That's what the article says. But then they show the symmetrical and asymmetrical wings and how they operate differently and how they function differently. And it is quite amazing when you really stop and consider, we just think a bird has feathers. That there are different kinds of feathers. Some, yeah. some people probably realize that but there are flight the parts. Part. Right, but the design has to be different. Absolutely it does. And they have some uh, examples of slotted wings and unslotted wings and different symmetrical and asymmetrical wings and, and different things and how they function so much differently amongst all the animals. Some use their wings for flapping. Some use their wings for just gliding. So they are different in their feather design. And they say here that it's probably evolved multiple times in dinosaurs. Uh, no, probably don't think so. Not. No. Probably not. I want to mention that the reason that we go through these articles and critique them is because this is what the standard science is teaching at this time. And Correct. Uh, you or your children or grandchildren, they're being taught these kinds of things, and we just want to point out and help you to realize what they're saying. Yet only in birds did flight feathers attain the degree of shape shifting we see today. That ability of feathers to twist in just the right way is what enabled slotting, which makes the wing much more efficient at low flight speeds. In essence, a slotted wing behaves as if it is longer and narrower than it is anatomically. Slotting also makes the wingtip very resistant to stall. You think they have a stall horn? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Whereby the airflow separates from the wing, causing a precipitous loss of the lift that keeps the bird in the air. It's a vital adaptation that underpins an array of aerial aerobatics. I'm not sure about the adaptation part no, either. No, it's not I think an adaptation. It's, it's just that's the way God made him. That's the reason they do what they do. The feathers are designed with a purpose that God gave them. Correct. In flight feathers, the barbs interlock like Velcro teeth to form the smooth, windproof surface of the veins. In down feathers, the barbs are loosely structured and fluffy to trap heat. Many of the other kinds of feathers combine aspects of these two types. Well, that's kind of amazing, too, because man gets ideas from watching God's creation. Always. Always. The good ideas, at least. But how can an animal produce feathers with different anatomies across its body? Well, that's an easy answer. How can animals produce feathers? You think they all had a board meeting and just decided, I think we need some feathers? Let's produce some? No. No. No, I think God just made them the way that he made them. People say, well, that's just a belief. Well, <laughs> everybody else that believes in evolution that thinks they came from a dinosaur believes they came from a dinosaur. There's no evidence of that. The barn owl's primary feathers have features that allow this bird of prey to fly silently. 
Feathers can become specialized for everything from speed and maneuverability to insulation or display. Well, they don't become that way. That's the way they were uh, born with them. That's how God designed for them how... to mature, to have the different types of feathers for the different parts of their body to work for the different reasons and the different purposes needed. To wit, long display feathers don't grow just anywhere on the body. They most often occur on the lower back and tail where they interfere comparatively little with flight performance. That's kind of convenient, huh? Yeah. They don't interfere with them. Maybe that's why they're put there. And it goes on and describes a whole bunch of the other designs of where what feather is and how it works. And it, it's amazing. It truly is amazing the way God built these things. We just think of a bird as a bird. It's a great study, and information like this is interesting. You just have to realize and understand how to sift out the evolutionary component. The microstructure of display feathers, especially tail streamers, may also be more finely tuned than previously thought. This article has that kind of statement several times, meaning they didn't know. They can become specialized for everything from speed and maneuverability to insulation or display, some of the most fascinating adaptations can be found in owls. Facial discs are an especially conspicuous feature of owls. These broad, semicircular fans of feathers around the eyes and ears give owls their distinctive appearance. The skull of an owl is actually quite long and narrow, but the feathers enveloping it completely change the contours of the animal. These facial discs are not just for looks. They do a remarkably good job of funneling sounds to the owl's ears. The disc, along with vertically offset ears and exceptionally sensitive middle and inner ear structures, make owls so good at determining their origin of a sound that they can zero in on prey without seeing it at all. They still use vision to make the final capture, though. Still, that exceptional sense of hearing wouldn't get owls very far without some additional feather adaptations. Owls solved both problems by evolving feather traits that make them inaudible during night. Uh -uh. That, uh, that's an amazing sentence because, number one, owls didn't solve any problem. They, they didn't decide to do this. They just, that's the way they were built. What's amazing is how inaudible read this next paragraph watch this it's hard to appreciate just how quiet owls are even ultra sensitive microphones if properly calibrated aimed exactly right and set to the maximum sensitivity in a silent space can just barely pick up sounds from a flying owl sometimes sometimes they can pick up sounds it's amazing they're really, really amazing creatures. We have seen them all over the country. We've seen them in our backyard. And I re remember we were at Mojave Desert one time looking at a mine, and one of y'all's ball caps fell <laughs> down into the mine, and that wasn't a good thing. And we were like, next thing you know, that owl that down there that we were peering at, he's going to come out with that ball cap on <laughs> he's his head. Be wearing it. <laughs> but this whole part of the article talks about the owl wing and how they do what they do and how quiet they are and how they can pounce on prey and... Then it says, there are no vibrations from the interactions between the feathers and the air capable of producing sound. And it talks about how they can be absolute quiet, silent, and fly right by you and startle you because you didn't know there was anything there. Their last common ancestor existed at least 50 million years ago, referring to the barn owls. No, it didn't. There's no such thing as 50 million years ago. Now we're to hummingbirds. And if you haven't watched the previous nugget, nugget 387, when we talked about hummingbirds, I want to encourage you to go back and do that. And have you subscribed yet? Please subscribe. Hummingbirds have ultra stiff feathers as an adaptation to the exceptionally high flapping frequencies and unusual flapping stroke they use to hover in front of flowers while sipping nectar. Unlike most birds, hummingbirds can get a substantial amount of weight support and thrust from their upstroke, not just their downstroke. And we did talk about that. We did. They do this by rotating their shoulders to flip the wing over completely. The wing needs to be very stiff for this method to work. That's amazing. We talked about that too, but here it is from them that they can turn that thing over. That means the uh, hummingbird muscular, skeletal, etc. structure isn't anything like other birds. What common ancestor did they come from? I don't know. A hummingbird? I think they came from a hummingbird. 
and here are your favorites. The, f- penguins. the flightless penguins, in contrast, have adapted to life in the water and on land. They possess some of the most specialized plumage of all. Having converted their entire body covering into a densely packed mosaic of tiny feathers. These feathers are individually quite stiff, and together they form a textured surface over the wings and body that regulates the boundary. Layer of water against them while the penguin is swimming. In essence, they use a rough coat of feathers to catch and hold a smooth jacket of water. The net effect is it reduces drag. They're more efficient. They didn't evolve that. (laughs) No, no. And it also provides air. It traps air. It says, it, like it talks about here, it gives them insulation, but yet doesn't make them so buoyant that they float on top of the water. We're not disagreeing that some animals have adapted from pre-flood to post-flood and where they live and different things like that, but they certainly haven't evolved from one thing to another. Adaptation is something totally different. And notice it says they can go as much as 1,600 feet down in the water in search of krill or fish or other aquatic prey. That is amazing right there. That's crazy. That is crazy. That's a deep dive pool. It it? is a deep dive, no doubt. Feathers are a fantastic model system for understanding how complex structures evolve and how anatomy and behavior influence each other over time. I'm going to reread that from a different worldview. Feathers are a fantastic model system for understanding how complex structures that were made by God and how the anatomy and behavior influence each other. It is no wonder that the applied science sector has taken notes of Feather's many brilliant features. Yeah, but they didn't note that it was done by God, unfortunately. It's the worldview that matters. It's sad. Already, they have led to successful technological innovations. Well, of course, because it works great because our wonderful creator made them perfect. It talks about Velcro-like mechanism, but we have to make that. Nobody made the wing that the feather that we're trying to replicate? Accident did. Uh, Chance did. It makes no sense. The silencing fringes of owl feathers have inspired ventilation quieting systems. The surface texture and boundary layer control principles of penguin feathers have made their way into robotics, mostly in prototypes. No doubt, feathers will give rise to more clever inventions in the future. We have only to let our creativity take flight. It's amazing. Look at nature. Look at what God did to come up with new designs and ideas for us. Well, of course. They do it all the time. And they don't give God the credit. That's too bad. That's why we're doing this, to give God the credit. Absolutely. And for you to give him the credit. Like you mentioned earlier, but it's still true, a penguin is going to give birth to a penguin, a hummingbird to a hummingbird, an owl to an owl, an eagle to an eagle. Everything is going to give birth after its own kind. Just like God said. Have you read Genesis 1? You might want to do that. Go back and reread it slowly. All right. Is that it? Are we done? We're done. All right. Well, thank you.